welcome to my kitchen. I have to tell you a story. A few years ago, we found out that one of our children couldn't eat any gluten. That meant no more wheat, barley, rye, or traditional oats. And we were always a family that enjoyed cooking and eating together. And it was really a challenge for us to find ways in which to recreate all of the things that we'd previously eaten so that they could be shared with our little guy who couldn't have gluten anymore. And one of the things that he loved most were crepes on Sunday mornings. So we had to find a way to make these crepes again. And through many false starts and many crepes that fell apart before they reached the plate, we came up with a recipe that's not only better tasting, I think, than the traditional crepes, but actually more nutritious. And the children love it, and we all get to have our Sunday morning crepes. So I'm gonna show you how to make that today. And even if you're not gluten intolerant, you might actually choose to make these crepes for the nutritional value. So because I make these so frequently, I like to mix up a batch of the crepe mix beforehand and just store it in my pantry so that I have it ready. I have a box that says crepe mix on it just so I don't get mixed up with the other flours. And basically what we're gonna do is mix a few different kinds of flour together. They're all gluten-free flours. And the nice thing about this is that it adds structure where the gluten in traditional crepes kind of held them together. The mixing of these flours and the addition of a little bit of extra egg actually solves that problem. So this is teff flour. It comes from an Ethiopian grain that is very small. It's the tiniest grain known to mankind. And because of that, it has a very high iron content. Um, and it's, it's healthy, it's a very healthy kind of flour. They use it to make the Ethiopian bread called injera, but it's lovely in crepes. This is sweet white sorghum flour, and we're gonna add a bit of that. And then we're gonna add a nice gluten-free white rice flour, just to balance it out. And finally, for a bit of protein and a little bit of extra fiber and flavor, I'm gonna add ground hazelnuts to my mix. And then the last thing we need to add is something called xanthan gum. It's actually a natural product, but it, what it does is it adds the elasticity that's missing when you have gluten-free anything. So most gluten-free items will contain a tiny bit of xanthan gum. So we're just gonna add that on top. And then I'm gonna do this. This is my favorite part. We're just gonna shake it up until it's all nicely mixed. And every time you cook these crepes, you're gonna to wanna to shake it again. I can already hear my little guys coming to try some. We'll let them have some in a little while. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to mix together all of our ingredients and make some crepes so that you can see how well they work. So I'm gonna preheat a flat crepe pan and I'm just gonna turn that on kind of medium to medium low for it to get nice and warm. And this is the quick part. This is the part that you can do even on a weekday morning if you feel like you have five extra minutes and you wanna make something special for them other than cereal. I'm just gonna crack three eggs into a bowl. Never be afraid to make a mess in the kitchen. Okay, then I'm gonna add some milk. some sugar, and a bit of vanilla essence. Okay, so that's my wet mixture. What I'm gonna do now is just mix this up. Using a whisk, I'm just whisking it together. You don't have to do this for a long time, just for a few minutes. And then we're gonna measure out about three quarters of a cup of our gluten-free crepe mix that we just made. But remember, you're not gonna have to mix it every day. Once you've mixed a batch of it, you can just use it as needed. So just about three quarters of a cup. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit more or a little bit less. And I'm gonna try and keep that dry in the pantry until the next time I use it, okay? So I am mixing up my crepe mix. It might, you might feel like it's a little bit runny at first, like this couldn't possibly result in a crepe. But what you'll find is that the crepes come out nicely. This is actually a great way to work on your arm muscles at the same time. 
Okay, now I'm, I feel like this might be a little bit, maybe I might just add a little bit more of my crepe mix. I'll show you what the texture is gonna be like at the end. I'm just gonna add a little bit more so that it's not too runny. And what we want in the end of it is like a, something, the consistency of like a thick olive oil. So kind of like a very runny batter. And then we're gonna make crepes out of it. So I'm gonna take, I can already hear the excitement in the background. I'm gonna take a little bit of butter and put it on the pan. And I'm just gonna move it around on the pan until it kind of coats the bottom of the pan. Okay. This is when the children smell the butter melting and they start running down the stairs because they want some. And then when it's nice and warm, we're gonna pour a little bit of this batter onto the crepe pan. I'm just gonna wait one minute for it to get nice and warm. Okay. I'm hearing them chanting, mom's making crepes. I don't think you can hear that, but I can. <laughs> Very gratifying as a mother. And now I'm just gonna shake this pan all the way around until I get a nice thin crepe. So we want this to be as thin as possible because the thinner the crepe, the better the experience for the kids. Okay, so we've got this now spread out in a nice thin, thin crepe and we're going to wait for the edges to get brown and then we're gonna flip it over and put a little bit of either Nutella or jam or a tiny bit of syrup. It doesn't need to be very sweet. You don't have to add a lot of, of sugar. Just the taste of this homemade warm crepe with a little bit of butter in the pan is gonna be very satisfying to your children. So now we see the edges of our crepe starting to get a little bit brown. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just lift up the edges. We're kind of, you can use your spatula to release the edges of the crepe all the way around and then you're gonna lift up one side and just plop it on your spatula and flip it over. And if it doesn't end up in the middle of the pan, you can just move it over. It needs much less time on the second side than on the first side, so you, you kind of start to see bubbles rising in the crepe and then you know that it's cooked all the way through. Then you just need a plate and I'm gonna just take it like this and slide it off. Ready for the next one. Now, this is my trick. I always start on the next one before I feed the first one to a child. Otherwise, there can be war over who got the first crepe. So, always get at least two or three going so you can feed them each one while you're trying to make the next round. So we're gonna do the same jiggling action to try and get the crepe really thin and really round. There we go. And we're gonna let the edges of that get brown. And while we do that, we can dress this crepe. So my children love Nutella. And so we're gonna use just a little bit, like about this much is enough. And we're gonna flip this crepe over so they get the nice golden brown side on the outside and we're gonna make a little line of Nutella down the center. That's really all they need, it's just a kind of a thin line of Nutella. Flip it in half, roll it up, cut, and serve on a plate. Tastes really good. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to flip this crepe, and in the meantime, got a little serving plate, and I'm just gonna stack these crepes on here and then I'm going to, this one looks like it's getting brown around the edges, so I'm just gonna lift up the corner and flip it. Leave it on for just another 30 seconds or so, just until we see the bubbles start to rise so we know the crepe is cooked. And then, we can slide it off. There we go. So I'm just gonna make up my second crepe so that nobody feels left out. And just a reminder, you don't have to use Nutella. You can serve these with maple syrup or jam. I've even made applesauce before and served that on the inside, and the kids love it. They are much healthier than traditional crepes because they have the teff flour and the ground hazelnuts in them, and they're just as delicious. 
So I hope your kids will enjoy them as much as mine do. Thanks for joining me.